Hello friends, today I'm going to show you the new key smart lock. So I will do the unboxing video together with a general introduction on smart locks. If you want uh, to see a specific uh, item of this video, like the installation or my conclusion, you can skip directly to this part by the index that is in the video description. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, of course. So let's get started. So the box is a little bit damaged, but I think that's more due to the delivery more than it has to do with Nuke itself. So there we have the Nuki keypad version 2 with the fingerprint access. We have the Nuki smart lock 3.0 Pro. And we have the Nuki universal cylinder. So with a smart lock, you can open and close your door just by pressing a button on your smartphone or giving a voice command. So in this time of internet of things, it's really handy to be able to open your door just by pressing on your smartwatch or asking Siri to open your door. You don't need keys any longer, so you can leave the house without a pair of keys. And even on the go, you can check if your door is closed or not. It is really helpful for giving temporary access like the housekeeping or someone to drop something off in the house or when you're on holiday to give access to your neighbors to feed the cat. There's no risk involved losing your keys as the access is determined on the door itself and by your smartphone. So the main question people ask is, is a smart lock safe enough? Well, in fact, the security of your door is determined by your door itself and by the cylinder that you use. So if you don't have a cylinder that is marked with a good rating, the door isn't safe anyway. So if you put in a good cylinder and you have a good door, there's no risk at all. From the outside, you don't even see that there is a smart lock. So people that ask about their insurance policy and think that would be a problem, you don't do any modification to the door and its safety. You only add something on the inside. People that are afraid that the smart lock could be hacked, it is really complex. There is a Bluetooth mechanism inside that works with challenges, so you can't copy the Bluetooth signal from a distance and reuse it. And the security level is comparable to internet banking. So a really high level security with only few experts that know how the system works exactly. So I would even say that it is safer than classical door with keys, because here when I lose my keys, I have to replace the cylinder. And that would say that I have to go to the shop, buy a new cylinder here with the smart lock. If I lose my phone, I can directly stop the access for that specific phone. From minutes or hours, I go to seconds. Second, most asked questions, uh, what happens if my phone runs out of battery? Every phone in your household can access uh, the door, but if you have a keypad installed, you don't have this problem neither. And it is always wise to hide a key somewhere outside the house, so you can always enter just simply by using a key. A little leaflet. So I opted for the new key. Uh, I think as it concerns the access of your house, it would be wise to go for a good brand with a good reputation. New key is a, a brand from Austria, Europe, and was created in uh, 2013. Originally, it was named No key, but after a dispute with the phone brand, they renamed it like New key, that stands for New key. In German. Security wise, they passed the last five years of 
AV test. That's a high security independent test. They have a very detailed page on their website that describes the security. I bought it directly on the Nuki website. As I always do with brands, I like to buy it on the, in the original stores. I even found a discount code. And when you look at my video description, you can also find a discount code for yourself, 30 euro discount. So the principle is really simple. This Nuki smart lock is placed on top of your key inside the door and with a command it turns the key to open or close the door but you still can do it manually by pressing on the button or even turning this disc around yourself the difference between the Nuki smart lock pro and the normal smart lock is that the pro has an extended battery and it has built-in Wi-Fi. So you don't need a bridge in order to control your smart lock when you're not at home. The normal version doesn't have a bridge built-in, so you can use it by Bluetooth, but when you're outside of your house, you can't use it any longer and you need a bridge. So there is the lock itself. Here are the back plates. So on the Nuki website, there is a pretty nice tutorial that shows you if you can use the smart lock in your house yes or no but normally it is compatible with all the doors just a special reminder for the french system where you have to raise the door handle in order to close it officially nuki says it doesn't work with this kind of doors it does work but you have to be there to raise the handle so there are two kind of back plates one back plate that can be screwed on top of your cylinder and this back plate is for the cylinders that doesn't have enough space to be screwed on and they stick on with a 3m tape so here i've got my charging cable so the smart lock charges by USB. The lifespan of the battery depends, of course, of your usage. It varies between two or six months. If you use it a lot electronically, it will uh, empty earlier. If you use it more manually, it will hold on longer. But afterwards, you can simply charge it again with this little USB cable. The U Nuki app alerts you when there's only 20% of battery left. In worst case, if it really dies on you when you're not home, you can charge it. You can still access your home by using the, your key that you hidden somewhere. So now keypad. So the reason why I choose for a keypad as well is that I want to be able to unlock my door even without a smartphone. Like my kids, they don't always take the phones to school. And this way they still can access the house. It also eliminates the problem of when you have your phone with an empty battery. And you can see it's a little bit bigger than the previous keypad, but it has a fingerprint on it. It can store up to 20 fingerprints and 200 key codes. And you can set a key code uh, in time frames. So if you have the housekeeping every Monday morning, you can set they can only access the house on Monday morning with their code. So the reason why I bought also a cylinder, on my cylinder I can't use a key on the outside of the door when there's a key already on the inside of the door. It's always better to have that system uh, in order to be able to open your door whenever the smart lock battery is empty. So I opted for this new key cylinder, uh, but you can use any cylinder that has the option to be used on both sides. Just be aware that it is a good quality with a high security level. I really like this version as it is universal. It comes with five keys and you can adapt the size of your cylinder. So it goes with virtually every door. It's a really nice one. Again, on the outside, you can tell that it is a new key cylinder or a smart lock. So let's go to installing. So I'm going to replace this cylinder. So to remove the cylinder, it is really easy. We just remove this screw. And by turning a little bit,
There, you have it. The cylinder. So, I measured it from the, the middle to the outside. I will need 40-40. This is a 40-35, but it is also a little bit too short to attach the new key. So, I would have to use the back plate with the 3M sticker, but I prefer the one with the screws. As you can see, I would have to adapt the new key cylinder as it is too short on the outside this way around and too long on the inside. I will need to have to add a little bit on this side and remove a little bit on this side. Therefore they provide you with extra tools. So let's get started. So now it matches up with the inner side, but with more space to install my new key. So the universal cylinder can be adapted to different sizes. I will have to go for the 42. So that means that I only have to add one piece and that's the biggest piece. So this one and this little bar so this cylinder is built up against pulling breaking pick locking this goes like this this one inside and then this little piece there as well. There you go. So let's see how it compares to the old one. So as you can see, it depasses a little bit. Ideally, it would be flat. See here, it is three millimeters. If I would choose the smaller size, I go to 37. So it would be inside of the door. So it isn't a problem here because this lock is protected. So if anyone would try to pull it, it just will break in the middle and they still can enter. Let's try with the key from the outside, if it works. So the next step is putting the back plate on top of it. So the next step is just to put the nookie on top. So I will remove a little battery protection and this protection fall on top. And I'll show you in the application the further steps. But before you can put the nookie over, this little knob, here you can see it, to go inside of the nookie. So for the keypad installation, there are several options, as long as it is in Bluetooth reach, so 5 up to 10 meters. So you can put it on the wall like this. You could put it just on top or on the side. On this side or on the other side. That's just your personal taste. And it goes with 3M tape, so it is as easy as sticking it on the place that you like.
So it made its first Bluetooth connection. Now it is downloading the newest firmware. I give permission for my location when I use the app. And now I have to indicate where the nuke is exactly. So let me point this out onto my house. This is for geofencing. So it knows when you're close to it that it can open your door. There I have to pick what kind of door I have. So I have the classical system. I have to configure a secret code in order to protect my smart lock in the application itself. So let's start the calibration. First it has to be completely open, which it is. So it locks the door completely and it opens the door completely. And it says it's done. So do you want to have notifications? Of course I want. I use it for a private function. So I don't have the door sensor yet. So I won't configure the door sensor. Activate internal Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi is active right now. So I can also open and close the door when I'm not in Bluetooth range. I can give it a name and give it a lock name as well. I can accept if they can open the door in a distance. So when they're not in Bluetooth range, I can decide if they can use auto unlock. So that is that it's opened when they're in geofencing range. And I can determine if they have a certain period of time frame. Here I can send this code to someone in order to use. Go back to the checklist, connect with the home kit. Of course I will. So it is unlocked now and when I lock it So in the new key app, you have the starting screen, which are locked. Now you can see it is unlocked. And when I press the button, you have this little screen where you can choose to unlock, lock, or when I slide upwards, 
open the door. I'm sorry, the text is in Dutch as my telephone is in Dutch. You can unlock the door and that means that it will unlock even a little bit further and then your door will pop open or the lock and go. So the lock and go function is a function where you can press the button and it will lock the door within by default 20 seconds, but you can uh, define in the, in the settings how many seconds it has to wait. You can also go to settings right here but first I'll show another thing. You can slide in order to lock the door or unlock the door. You can choose what option uh, it gives when you slide. I have automatic function. So when the door is unlocked and I swipe, it will lock the door and vice versa. But you can also choose that it locks when you slide to, to the right and it lock and go when you slide to the left. So then when we go to the settings, I can manage my devices right here. I choose my smart lock, but you can access the keypad settings also by this way. So here have the general settings. I will just explain a little bit every function and how you can use it. So functions and configuration. It tries my pin code right now and it here you can see general show some information about my smart lock. I can change my pin code, change the time zone, choose what kind of door uh, I have, the time that it unlocks and the number of times that it have to, has to turn the keys. So here you can see it is 720 degrees. So it turns the key two times, but you can also define uh, even more specific. It has to turn further or less and I can reset or calibrate my smart lock as well. Then I can check my Wi-Fi. You can see it is connected. My battery, it can also look automatically for its power pack. There's this option. And then you can choose whether the Bluetooth connection is automatic, rapid, average or slow. I leave it on automatic for now. But if I see that I have some lag on the Bluetooth connection, I will use quick. Now we go back to the smart lock button and uh, the LED light. So here you can choose if it can pair with a new device. I leave that on on right now. With the second option, you can choose if it can lock the smart lock by pressing the button on the smart lock and what the press does. So one press is intelligent. So that means that it will lock when it's unlocked and vice versa, but you can also choose that it shows you the status. So when you press once, it shows you the status. And for twice, I have lock and go. You can choose the brightness of the LED light. The last option is if you want the LED light blink every five seconds. Then you can see extra services for the new key. So there is a smart hosting for those who have like a better breakfast or Airbnb. And the second one is for extra care, protect and guarantee. So in the functions, we have night mode. Here you can activate an automatic lock within a certain time frame. Time planning is a little bit the same principle, but there you can uh, decide for specific time frames to lock or unlock your door. So the auto lock function means that it will lock automatically your door after a certain period of time. So automatically it is five minutes, but you have several options. So that means that when you enter and you close the door behind you within this time frame, the new key will lock the door automatically. And then this lock and go function, when I double press the new key, 20 seconds later, it will lock the door automatically. Then you have the new key web. As I understood is you can manage the access by new key web, but within the telephone and the application, I don't see really the use of this, the notifications. Here you can enable or disable the notifications. The home gate is activated. And here you can see the name I gave to my new key in my Apple home kit. Then you have the same for Amazon Alexa, but I don't have an Amazon Alexa and a new key door sensor. So right now I don't have the door sensor. The door sensor is a little device that you place on top of the door and the door itself. And it sees if your door is really closed or not. Now, when we go back, we have the log. So here you can see all the actions that were done on the new key. So you can see that I entered at 8.14 and 
and I entered by a finger ID. Then the status of connection. So here you see that my smartphone is connected to the server and the Wi-Fi network to my Nuki Smart Lock Pro, but there is also a Bluetooth connection as I am not that far away from my Nuki right now. Here you can define the name of your Nuki within the application. Here you can manage the accessibility for the users. When I click on the user, I see their statistics. I can choose if they can lock the door and I can also choose if they can lock and unlock the door on distance. So for my kids, I deactivate this option. I don't want them to unlock the door by accident so they can only use the door when they're in Bluetooth range and their access is illimited. So you could also set an access for one week, for example. Then when we go to the keypad, as I told, you can access the keypad settings directly within uh, this screen. So I have the settings. You see the new key keypad ID, it's charged. It's here you say that is enough charge for right now. It has alkaline batteries. I can see the statistics, change the code of my keypad itself. I can use it to lock my new key. It has access all the time. Here you can choose what it does if you press your code. So if you push your code, it unlocks the door. So I could also choose that it opens the door. With this option, you can choose to uh, use the little triangle to lock the door. And with uh, the slider, you can choose the brightness of the LED. So I have blurred the, the access right here. Here you can see who have defined an access code and their fingerprint. Everybody has to choose their unique access code. The real tough thing here is that the keypad doesn't have a zero and almost all codes that are easy to remember have zeros. And then if I click on one of the names, you can see uh, the name, you can see the access code that I blurred here, of course, for obvious reasons. If it is active or not, the time frame, but it is always active for him. And a fingerprint, here you can see that I defined his right finger and his left finger. So you can store up to 20 fingerprints. So in a normal household, you can uh, definitely define multiple fingers per person. And then you have an option for the fob. That's like those little control boxes that you use for a garage door. And then you have smart actions. I mentioned that earlier with auto unlock, you can define view fencing and it will unlock the door whenever you're near your house. I don't think it is that handy for two reasons. One, it means that your location has to be active all the time. It really uses a lot of battery of your phone. And second thing is, if you lose your phone and that person comes close to your house, the door will pop open automatically. Smart notification will give you a notification when you're near your door. So that could be handy, but it still uh, requires your location to be active. And smart warnings is the same principle. It warns you uh, when you're out of reach, but your door is still unlocked. And here you can set your swipe actions. So when you swipe to the right, I have intelligent, but you could choose lock, unlock, open your door, etc. So that's within the Nuki app. As I use HomeKit, I won't use the Nuki app that much. I only use it to define new access. But otherwise, I will manage this directly in the Apple Home app. But I want to show you the widget. There is a widget for Nuki that could be handy. And here, within one widget, I can unlock, lock, open the door or lock and go. So when we go within the Apple HomeKit, I can now see Within my favorites that there is my door and it is unlocked. When I go to the details of the accessory, I can lock and unlock it with the slider button. I can choose another logo. The battery percentage, if it is busy to charge and all the standard uh, settings that, that are typical for HomeKit. So I linked it to, to a good night scheme. So when I say good night to Siri, it will shut down all my lights and it will close the door if it isn't closed yet. So one thing I didn't precise yet, here you can see the battery percentage of the new key. It is 74% right now. The Smart Lock 3 Pro comes with the extended battery pack, so it holds up way longer. But you also have the possibility to wire it to a 230 volt contact and it will be powered all the time. So you can still lock and unlock your door by turning this ring. If you turn it a little bit, the LED light lights up to show you the status. So 
the open ring shows that the door is unlocked right now and if I turn it all the way around it will show a closed ring to show me that the door is locked. So it is in use now since yesterday and already I love it. It is really strange but nice feeling to leave the house without even having to take your keys with you. I just ask Siri to close the door and it closes right away. So people, I can really recommend the new key smart lock. This isn't a sponsored video, by the way. I paid for all this stuff myself, but you can help me by subscribing to the channel, leaving a like or a comment, and I see you in the very next video. Bye-bye.